Hey folks, Eric Scheidel here, the HVAC Service Mentor. Thanks for watching and welcome back to the channel. This is going to be part two of our discussion about sensible heat ratio. If you haven't seen part one yet, stop the video and go find part one and watch that first because this one follows that. And if you start off here, you might be a little bit confused. Uh, anyway, we where we talked about back in step one is we kind of talked about what is sensible heat, what is latent heat, what is a air conditioning uh, performance spec sheet? What is the information presented? And specifically, what is a uh, sensible heat ratio? Now for a quick review, for those of you who just decide to barrel right on through and pick it up as you go along, sensible heat ratio means the um, kind of breakdown between how many BTUs of heat removal from an air conditioner under a certain set of conditions, how many of those BTUs are going to be sensibly heat, and how many of those BTUs are going to be latent heat. And as we began to discuss, that ratio will change based on what the operating conditions are. And for me, I find this absolutely fascinating. It's almost like air conditioning systems have this built-in self-regulating feature that they automatically know how to divide their resources, which is really cool. By the way, another quick review, the systems we're talking about here are going to be conventional vapor compression refrigeration systems, conventional split systems, conventional package units. This does not necessarily apply quite the same way to ductless systems such as mini splits, such as variable refrigerant flow systems or variable refrigerant volume systems. It doesn't apply quite exactly the same way to refrigeration systems like coolers and freezers and things like that. And variable air volume systems. Eh, all these concepts are still in there, but the way they actually work out is just a little bit differently. Uh, so we are focusing on what I consider to be the most common type of air conditioner in the world, and that is a standard conventional constant volume vapor compression refrigerant driven system. And uh, let's pick up right where we left off before. We were looking at Goodman's spec specification sheet for the GSX-13036 three ton air conditioner with a standard three ton coil. And we just got done looking at the design conditions, which is a 95 degree outdoor temperature with an 80 degree indoor dry bulb and a 67 degree indoor wet bulb temperature. And we found that our sensible heat ratio was a 0.77. See the outdoor wet bulbs up there. And remember that wet bulb temperatures, the best way that I like to think about wet bulb temperatures as it applies to this concept is that wet bulb is a representation of how much heat energy is contained within the water vapor in the air. The higher the wet bulb temperature, the greater amount of heat energy the water vapor represents. And this has everything to do with what is the heat load imposed upon the air conditioning system. As we change the heat load, the work that the air conditioner is presented with changes and the way in which it performs and the way in which it does what it does will also change. So in order for you to understand how well your air conditioner is performing, you have to have a good understanding of the conditions under which it is working. You have to good, have a good understanding of the scope of the job that it's trying to do before you're able to analyze how good of a job is it doing. So let's take a look at this. Down here in the second chart from the top is our 80 degree dry bulb column. And under design conditions, we have 33.6 thousand BTU per hour heat removal with a 0.77 sensible heat ratio. This means that 77% of those 33,600 BTUs are sensible heat. They are going to be dedicated to dropping the temperature. The other 23,000 BTUs are latent heat. They are dedicated to absorbing the moisture. Now watch this. Without changing anything, other than the amount of water vapor in the air, our wet bulb increases from 67 to 71. This represents a difference in relative humidity from 50% up to about 65%. Not a massive change, but pretty significant change in energy. 
Look what happens to our sensible heat ratio and look what happens to our total heat absorbed. Total heat absorbed goes up. We didn't make the compressor run faster. We didn't change the refrigerant. We didn't change the outside air temperature. We didn't change the inside air temperature. However, the amount of heat energy being presented to the AC has changed because of that latent heat value going up. As a result of the amount of work available to be done, the amount of work being done got higher. But look what happened to the sensible heat ratio. It's astounding. It changed from 77% to 58%. Now, 58% of those 36,000 or so BTUs is devel devoted toward dropping the temperature. And the other 40 or so percent, 42%, is devoted toward latent heat removal, condensing of water. Take another look. This also has an impact on temperature difference. Temperature difference will change based on the relative humidity of the air that your air conditioner is working on. As relative humidity goes up, temperature difference goes down. This is because the amount of sensible heat being removed has gone down. Therefore, the amount of temperature change that your thermometer will sense will go down. That's fascinating. Look at it the other direction. As we change from a 71 degree dry wet bulb to a 63 degree wet bulb, the overall heat removal falls as well. Look what happens to the temperature difference. It goes up. Because there is less latent heat available to absorb, overall less work gets done. More sensible heat is being removed. Now we're at a 95% sensible heat ratio and the delta T goes higher. We remove more sensible heat from the airstream. 63 degree wet bulb at an 80 degree dry bulb represents about a 36, I'm sorry, about a 36% relative humidity. Down here at a 59 degree wet bulb, that's about a 30% relative humidity. And look here, the sensible heat ratio is 1.0. All of our BTU that's being removed, and it's only 30 point, you know, um, it's a whole half a ton less than the rating <laughs> than it was before. Um, 30,800 BTU. All of those BTU is now devoted toward dropping the temperature. Now that's where the chart ends. If we were to go further down into the 20% relative humidity, down into the tens, the delta T would go higher and higher. Same thing on the other end. If we get more and more humid, more and more relative humidity, the delta T gets lower and lower and lower. And this is one of the keys that all HVAC technicians need to understand. And we're going to do a whole video on measuring temperature drop. And this is why, because to know what your temperature drop is based on what your relative humidity is, gives you a very great insight into how your air conditioner is removing and absorbing heat and performing in reference to a chart like this. You don't necessarily have to have this chart in front of you, which is not easy to do on the field to be able to understand is my air conditioner performing well, or is it not performing well? Is there some kind of a problem that is hindering its performance? And in order to know that, you have to know what are the conditions under which it's performing. So you have to know what is your outdoor air temperature, what is your indoor air temperature, and what is your relative humidity, and what is your wet bulb temperature. So you have to know all of those things. And we will discuss those again in a future video that we're going to talk about those things. Cool. So that's the basic idea. The basic idea being that total heat content, uh, total heat removal for an air conditioning system changes based on the operating conditions. Let us go ahead and take the outdoor temperature down 10 degrees and see what happens. Let's leave the indoor conditions the same at 67 degree uh, wet bulb and 80 degree dry bulb. Take a look at that. Our heat removal went up. Our heat removal went up from 33.6 to 34.4. Our sensible heat ratio went down a little bit. Um, delta T stayed about the same because we're still at the same relative humidity. It's still 50% relative humidity inside. The amount of amp draw went down. Um, I'm sorry, the KW went down. The amp draw went down. The head pressure went down. The indoor suction pressure hmm, didn't change a whole heck of a lot. It's pretty darn close to where it was, but it did change a little bit. And as you play around on this chart and look at different things, you'll notice that Everything that changes has an impact on this performance. Once we get up to 105 degrees, things change in the not so good way. Look at that, our, our heat removal has gone down. It went from 33.6 to 31.9.
And when we get real hot, 115 for those of you in real hot areas, right? Desert communities, um, New Mexico, Arizona, uh, Southern Colorado, um, California, Western, uh, sorry, Eastern California, uh, the desert areas of California and uh, the South where we get triple digit temperatures a lot. Yeah, that three ton AC is not a three ton AC anymore. Not even close. It's only 30, that's a ton and a half AC at this point. Uh, sorry, two and a half ton AC at this point. So performance makes a big difference um, or conditions make a big difference in performance. Let's take a look here. I think we're gonna do something really crazy here. Check this out. We're gonna change our indoor down to uh, 75 degrees. Now let's go all the way down to 70 degrees. We're over here at 95 at a 95 degree outdoor and a 70 degree indoor. We're gonna be right about here. 30,000 BTU of heat removal. Amp draws go down. Everything kind of relaxes. Everything goes down. Sensible heat ratio has changed from 0.77 down to 0.68. We're doing more latent heat removal as our uh, indoor loads lighten up. Very, very fascinating that the performance changes as the conditions change. And that's all that we change. We don't change airflow. We don't change the... Um, refrigerant quantity we don't change anything else but the conditions and the performance changes all right now let's take a look at changing something we're going to change the airflow it has become kind of a rule of thumb that if you want better dehumidification you need to lower your airflow and we know that our standard airflow is 400 cubic feet per minute per nominal ton so for this three ton AC, nominal airflow or standard airflow is going to be 1200 CFM. Dang it. There we go. 1200 CFM. Well, this chart also will show us what we get at 450 CFM per ton. That's 1350 CFM or 350 CFM per ton down to 1050. So let's go ahead and look at that one right now. We're going to drop our CFM from 1200 down to 1050. How does that affect how our air conditioner performs? Well, the first thing that it does is it reduces the overall total heat removal from 33,600 down to 31,000. That represents a change. The amount of BTU per hour has actually gone down, which means now that we have reduced our airflow, we've also reduced our cooling ability and our cooling capacity. It's going to take the air conditioner longer to do the same job that it did in a shorter time before. We've also changed our sensible heat ratio. It's changed from a 0.77 to a 0.74. That doesn't sound like a whole lot, but you just, you wait. We're going to watch what these two combinations of these two reductions does. Our Delta T has remained about the same. Interesting. It has, in, in actuality, I think Goodman is being a little generous here because if we reduce our airflow that much, we are going to see a higher delta T under most conditions, um, but it's going to become more prevalent the, the, the drier it is. And under the higher humidity is 50% and above, it's not a huge difference because there's so much energy presented by that water vapor. And uh, then so on, our pressures change. Our actual, our head pressure went down. Look at that. Not a whole lot though, about 10 PSI. Our suction pressure, pretty much the same. Went down a little, but not a whole big of a change. Well, that's interesting. It doesn't sound like a whole heck of a lot. Let's look at this in another way. So what I've got here is a chart. I've basically taken these two portions of this chart, put them into an Excel spreadsheet so that we can see what this really means to us and why this is important. So here across our relative humidity, we've got 30%, 36%, 50%, and 65%. I find it a lot easier to in, convert dry bulb plus wet bulb into relative humidity because uh, relative humidity is uh, a little easier to measure, a little easier to understand from a conceptual point of view, and um, also it's really what temperature drop is based on. Dry bulbs are the same at 80 in each one. There's our different wet bulb values for uh, those of us nerds out there. Here we go, total heat removal in MBH, 1000 BTU per hour. 33.6 is our design and it goes down as our relative humidity goes down. The less work there is to do, the less work gets done. Kind of like 
me. <laughs> Sensible heat ratios from 1.0 at 30%, 9.95 at 36% relative, uh, 0.77 at 50% relative, and 0.58 at 65%. Look at that big jump. Wow. We change 15% relative humidity, and we go from a 77% sensible heat ratio to a 58% sensible heat ratio. So now I've gone and taken these sensible BTUs and latent BTUs and broken them out to make it easier to get a sense of what's going on. Back to design conditions here at 50% relative humidity, 95 degree outdoor, 80 degree indoor. Sensible heat BTUs is 25,900. Latent heat BTUs is 7,700. So what does this mean as far as water absorption goes? This means that this system under these conditions running steadily will absorb or drain out 8 pounds of water per hour which is just under about a gallon. So about one gallon per hour of heat removal. Let's go ahead and drop the airflow from 1200 CFM to 1050 CFM. Get that up on the screen. There we go. So reducing the airflow from 1200 to 1050 represents a change in value of 13% reduction we have reduced the overall delivery of air to and through the evaporator coil by 13%. That has an impact. On our total heat removal at design conditions, we go down to 31,000 BTU per hour. This represents a fall of 8% of heat removal capacity in the total sense. On the sensible side, however, check this out, our sensible heat removal went all the way down to 22,900 BTU. This represents an 11% change in the sensible heat removal capacity of this air conditioner. But look what happened to our latent heat removal. Overall, the, the, the sensible heat ratio uh, went up a little bit and our latent heat removal went up very little. It went up from, uh, what was it before, 7.7? Uh, up to 8.1, 8,100 BTU per hour. This actually represents an increase of 4%. Now the combination of the reduction of our sensible heat ratio, our sensible heat removal, and the increase of our latent heat removal has a pretty big impact. It doesn't sound huge, but it ultimately does. And here's why. When we reduce our sensible heat removal capacity by 11%, this means that our air conditioning system has to run longer just to maintain the temperature set point. Imagine that this air conditioner is running under design conditions. Imagine that the set point indoors is 80 degrees, which most people don't like, I understand, but just bear with me for a minute. And the outdoor temperature is 95 degrees and this thing is just running to maintain set point. Remember that the thermostat on the wall controls to sensible temperature. Because we have now reduced the rate at which this air conditioner changes the sensible temperature by 11%. That means that every time it runs, every time it cycles to maintain set point, it will run 11% longer. For every hour, that means it's gonna be about seven minutes longer per run cycle. Meanwhile, while it is running, it is absorbing 4% more latent heat energy or 4% more water vapor. And, uh, what this basically breaks down to is the combination of the longer runtime plus the greater latent heat removal means that for every run cycle, just maintaining set point, this unit will pull an extra six ounces, six ounces of water out of the air than it would maintaining set point at 400 CFM per ton. Now, there's a downside to this. That all sounds great, especially if you're in a humid climate, which is true. However, you have also just reduced the ability of this air conditioner to maintain set point or to, um, to cool the house down. So if we, have in a, uh, if we have a setback happening, people leave during the day, temperature goes up when they come home at night, it might take forever to get that temperature down. So maintaining even temperatures is part of the key to um, having happy indoor environments and happy air conditioning systems. On the other hand, we may be able to tolerate a higher indoor set point with a greater latent heat removal. 
which means that we're going to be more comfortable at a higher temperature, which can potentially save a little bit of energy, but at the very least have us warmer uh, or at least drier, not warmer, but drier. Now, there is a lot more to think about here. You could literally spend a day or two just pouring over this one specification sheet and imagining different performance scenarios and analyzing how does this change the way the air conditioner performs. And honestly, that's a really great exercise to get into, to get started into. But what I wanted to do today is kind of lay the groundwork to identify that, yeah, as we all know, there's a sensible heat and a latent heat. And latent heat has to do with moisture removal. But the ratio of sensible to latent heat removal will change based on the operating conditions. The more heat energy there is to be removed, magically the more work the air conditioner does without changing anything. And that's, that's pretty cool. But for you as a technician, if you're analyzing the performance and if you're measuring your temperature drop, what does it mean? Is it the right temperature drop? Well, the answer is, well, it depends. It depends on the operating conditions. So uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet, because we're going to get deeper into some of these concepts as we move further. We're going to be talking about measuring temperature drop. We're going to be talking about measuring wet bulb, measuring relative humidity, and plugging all those numbers together to say, hey, is my air conditioner working correctly or is it not? And we're going to be talking about airflow in there too. We're going to be talking about outdoor temps. We're going to be talking about sear be talking about all kinds of really interesting things that the better you can understand them, the better and more effective you're going to be in the field. All right, folks, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, I hope you found this valuable. Please make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. By the way, if you're interested in more uh, interesting help you get better in the field kind of training. That's what I do. And you can see a lot more of it at my website at www.hvacservicementor.com. Thanks for watching, folks. I'll see you next time.